Hi guys, how's it going? So clearly I'm not here today. Don't stress about me, I'm totally fine. I will be back tomorrow. I just had something I had to take care of. So today we are gonna continue working on your monologues. Hopefully you've already recorded your monologues, uploaded them so that I can take a look at them and do a check-in and give you some feedback. If that is not true of you, you need to do that tomorrow. Get me that video because I have to be able to check in with you since I'm not checking in with you in person like I normally would. Okay, today we are gonna kind of continue in. We talked about blocking a little bit last week, but we're gonna dig a little deeper into that. So what I'm looking for is for you guys to be adding movements in on your own performance. So go ahead, get on Google Classroom now and open up intro to set and stage. Google Classroom, intro to set and stage. You can pause the video and give them a minute to get there. All right, you should have intro to set and stage open and your screen at the very top, you should have the dock open and everything. At the very top, it says unit four, introduction to scripted scenes, intro to set and stage notes. If your screen does not look like that, figure out why it doesn't open up the correct document. Okay, the very first section looks exactly like that worksheet we did last week. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of minutes. I'm gonna read it to you. You guys fill in the blanks and try to figure out what goes into those blanks before I give you the answers. So take about two minutes. You're gonna fill in universal blanks, help actors and directors quickly identify different parts of the blank. They can be written as blank, so they're quick and easy to write in your blank. Take a minute, try to figure out what goes in those blanks. You guys have about two minutes to do that. You can pause the video to give them time. All right, hopefully you guys have something written. Remember, I'm not looking for right here. I'm looking for you to be thinking and to be thoughtful. So I'm gonna go through and tell you what I put in those blanks. If yours makes total sense and you agree more than you agree with me, that's fine. Just make sure that you know what you're talking about and you can defend that. So the very first blank, universal labels is what I put. Universal labels help actors and directors quickly identify different parts of the, and I'll come back to that. First blank, labels. Second blank, I put stage. So it says universal labels help actors and directors quickly identify different parts of the stage. They can be written as, take a minute, think of what you wrote. I put abbreviations, abbreviations. They can be written as abbreviations so they're quick and easy to write in your blank. So next one, abbreviations. And the last one I put, script. They can be written as abbreviations, so they're quick and easy to write in your script. I'm gonna go back and read everything one more time. Universal labels help actors and directors quickly identify different parts of the stage. They can be written as abbreviations, so they're quick and easy to write in your script. Okay, hopefully everybody tracked along with that. If not, take a minute and get that filled out so you have that for reference. Now, go down to where it says important points of clarification. These stage labels are based on the blank and blank of the actor, not the audience. What do you think goes there? What are stage directions based on? The actor's what? Okay, if you didn't already figure this out, it's left and right. The stage labels are based on the left and right of the actor, not the audience. 
Remember last week when we took a long time to fill out that chart, you're doing the same exact thing. So you're the actor. You're standing here on the edge of the stage, looking out at your audience. Stage right is on your right. Stage left is on your left. It's the opposite if you're sitting in the audience. If you're the audience looking up at the stage, stage right is on your left. Stage left is on your right. So it's really important you get those straight in your head, okay? Really think about those. Now, in those boxes that are right below there, that's all you're doing is filling that chart out just like we did last week. I don't have off stage, I don't have audience on this chart. It's just the center stage, up stage, down stage, stage right, stage left. If you don't remember what these are, you need to open up your monologue vocab sheet. Scroll down to the very bottom where you labeled that chart and you can fill this one out to match it. So you're gonna have center, up, down, right, left. Take just a minute. I'll give you guys two minutes to get this filled out. You can write it either in full words or abbreviations as long as you know what those abbreviations mean. Do not just write letters and go, well, I don't know. Make sure you know what they mean. Two minutes. All right, you should have that chart filled out now with your stage directions. If you are confused, you need to ask for help. Don't just assume that I'm not gonna ask you for it. So go ahead and ask for help if you need it. If you have finished, go ahead and scroll down to the second page where it says set design, set design. Same thing, I'm gonna have you guys go through and fill in these blanks. I'll read them for you and just whatever you think could go in that blank that makes sense. Again, remember, I am not looking for you to be right. I'm looking for you to be thoughtful and to show that you have really thought through the things that I'm asking you for. So you are gonna fill in these blanks. It says set slash scenery, large pieces, furniture, objects, walls, etc., used to help the audience see the scenes blank. Sets slash scenery should include more than one blank for actors to explore. You're gonna fill those two in, and you're also gonna fill in the one that says levels. So that's the surfaces of different blanks, sets with more levels look more blank, blank levels should be closer to the audience, blank levels should be further away from the audience. Take two minutes, brainstorm those, fill those out with what you think goes in those blanks. Two minutes. You can pause the video now. All right, good work guys. So now you are going to listen up and I'm gonna read you the things that I put. If you disagree or if you think that yours is very similar, you can leave it. Or if you did not fill something in or you think that mine works a little bit better than yours, then you can fill that in. So I'm gonna read you what I have. Set slash scenery large pieces, furniture, objects, walls, etc., used to help the audience see the scenes, setting, setting, used to help the audience see the scenes, setting. Remember, setting means place, time period, who's there, what's going on. It's all of the stuff that happens in our exposition. So at the very beginning, where is the setting? So your first blank is setting. Then sets slash scenery should include more than one level, level for actors to explore. Sets slash scenery should include more than one level for actors to explore. And then down below, it's gonna explain what a level is. So again, your first blank is setting, your second blank is level. Moving on to levels. Surfaces at different heights for actors to stand, sit, lie, crouch, kneel on. Heights, as in how tall, H-E-I-G-H-T-S. Surfaces at different heights. Go ahead and fill that out if you've got something different. Moving on to the next one. 
Sets with more levels look more interesting. Sets with more levels look more interesting. And give actors more creative choices for movement. Choices for movement. I'll read that one one more time. Sets with more levels look more interesting and give actors more creative choices for movement. And our last one says, shorter levels should be closer to the audience. Shorter levels should be closer to the audience. Taller levels should be further away from the audience. Taller should be further away. So again, the shorter levels should be closer to the audience. The taller levels should be further away. Think back to your monologue vocab sheet. Sight lines is what we're talking about here. You want to make sure that your sight lines are clear by putting the tall stuff in the back, the short stuff in the front. Okay, if you need to, you can pause the video now. If you've got those filled out, we can continue moving on. Okay, the next section asks you to come up with how many levels do you see in each set design. Remember, levels include anything that the actor can walk on, that they can sit on, that they can stand on, anything that an actor can get on to cause themselves to be higher or lower is considered a level. So take two minutes, write down how many levels you see in each of those pictures, and also tell me what those levels are. So don't just say this one has three levels. You wanna say those three levels are the floor, the steps, and the second platform, or the floor, the chair, the desk. All of those things count for levels. Take two minutes, answer those for all three of those pictures. You can pause the video. All right, I'm gonna go through what I have written down for these. So your first one is the black and white picture. I know that one's a little bit difficult to see, but that one has a floor level, it also has each of the steps of the stairs leading up to the platform. So you can say there's either three, or if you counted the steps, you can add however many that is. So you've got your floor, your steps, your top platform. Floor, steps, top platform. Number two is that one with the moon in the background. It's got the five different uh, like slats there in the middle. It's kind of greenish. This one has the floor, the steps, the first platform, and the second platform. I will accept all of those answers. I will also accept if you counted the steps, you can add those in, or if you said that the two platforms in the back were separate. So if you have those broken out into three different platforms, that's fine too. So you've got your floor, your steps, your second platform, and then the back platforms. If you wanted to count those separately, you can do that too. And the last one is the one with the windows. So this one's a little bit tricky because sometimes you think levels are just things you stand on. Remember, it can be something that an actor can sit on too. So for this one, you have the floor, you have the chair, and you can also say the bench because on that bench, you could stand on it, you could sit on it. It adds a level, even though it's just kind of a small set piece. So you have the floor, you have the chair, and you have the bench. All right, if you did not get those filled out, Go ahead and do that now. You can pause the video to give them just a second to catch up. All right, you should have those blanks all filled in and you should have your le levels labeled on those three pictures. Now, here's where you guys get to be really creative. You are gonna grab a scrap piece of paper and you are gonna create your own set design. So you can pause the video, give them a second to grab a scrap piece of paper and something to draw with. Now that you have that scrap piece of paper, you are gonna draw a stage. 
Remember, it's got those six different places. If you want to add an apron, if you want to add the off stages, you can do that. But for right now, you just have to label those six boxes. The center, up, down, left, right. So go ahead and label that right now. Create a stage right now. Give them a minute so that they can catch up with that. Okay, you should have your stage drawn. Now, you can either label it or you can just put where the audience is. Somehow orient yourself to where the stage is. And now you are going to create a set for a kitchen. So you can add all sorts of different set pieces. Things to note, down at the bottom, notice how it's got the G, L, M, S. I know that seems a little confusing. All that those letters mean are giant, large, medium, small. So when you draw little boxes or circles, you wanna label those with how big they actually are. Giant would be something like a platform. So it would be a giant thing that's gonna take up a lot of the stage. Large would be something like maybe a kitchen table, like one of those big ones. Uh, medium could be something like a bench or a refrigerator, something like that. And small would be something small, like maybe a chair, or you could do dishes. If you're gonna do it that specific, you could do that too. Giant, large, medium, small. Remember, you wanna have your levels so that the big ones are in the back, the small ones are in the front. And I need to know what each of your items is. So you need to put labels on it. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys five minutes to work on this. So in the next five minutes, you should have your stage drawn and you should have each of your items for a kitchen labeled. Five minutes, starting now. You can pause the video. All right, guys, good work. So you should have your kitchen labeled now. This should look like a set. If you were to use a set for a kitchen, this is what it would look like. Now, here's gonna be the part where you apply it to the monologue that you are actually doing. So on the back of that paper or on a new piece of paper, you're gonna draw another stage. Same thing, center, up, down, left, right, audience. You can go ahead and draw that now. Okay, now that your stage is drawn, you are going to draw your set for your monologue. Your set for your monologue. This is not necessarily how you're actually going to perform it. I know that there are not gonna be platforms that you have available to you at home. This is like a dream scenario. If you had everything that you could possibly want or imagine, what would it look like? Go ahead, you've got five minutes to draw that, starting now. Okay, now that that is drawn, the last thing for the day, you are gonna grab your monologue. There are printouts of the ones that I have examples for that the sub can give you, or if you did it on something else, you can copy and paste that text into a Word doc or something. Email it to me and I will print it for you on Wednesday. But off to the side, you need to have at least three different places that you go in your monologue. So you can label those what they are and where they are. That would mean something like the couch upstage right. And off to the side of your monologue, you are gonna write where you are and what you are doing. You should have a minimum of three. You probably should have even more than that. These things are gonna be what is due for you on your remote day tomorrow. So be sure you check my Student View class website to see what else is due tomorrow. But if you don't finish this in class today, you're gonna to finish this tomorrow. All right, I will see you guys on Wednesday. Have a fabulous day.